Well, hello, good people. Finally, today we're gonna cover some basics on how to achieve consistent characters. Now for full transparency to get 100% consistency, I would say is almost impossible at the moment. But the way the technology is moving so fast, we're not far off from getting there. However, there are some workarounds that we can do to get close to it. Let's first talk about getting consistent faces. We can approach this in various ways. In these three images here, we're still using the raw stable diffusion 1.5. In this example, I've used two fictitious names. The first name here is totally fictitious. And then we have Katie Dobrev here. Dobrev is after Nina Dobrev. I just changed the first name. As you see at the bottom, base stable diffusion 1.5. No models were used. And then in these two images, you see that the face is still consistent, just a different style and feel. I then took the same prompt and used the model RPG to get this image. All of these images were done with RPG. You see that the resemblance is still there. And to be fairly honest, you can create one fictitious name and use that in the prompt. The reason why I use two is that it just for whatever reason seems to give better pleasing results. As I show you more images, one of the reasons why you want to use models is because using trained models is often a benefit because the way it's trained, typically it will keep certain characteristics. Some models are trained in a certain way where by default, they give you a consistent face and you can shape and mold that. So in these sets of images, I took the same names, but I entered Spanish Filipino to designate some sort of nationality. Now, going back to my point about using one fictitious name, you could totally do that. If we look at these examples here and you see that I've used the name Jess Alba, not Jessica Alba, and it looks nothing like her. But if you look at the faces, they're all very similar. So here's one of the images with the same prompt. Here's another, obviously different hairstyles. And here's another, and we'll finish off with this one. When it comes to clothing and attire, this is where we start to have some issues with consistency. If you look at this prompt, I've defined a plain blue t-shirt. And for some of these images, there is some consistent result. You'll see these two shirts are very similar as well as this one. So I'd highly advise you to keep it simple whether it's a plain black t-shirt, and if there's a specific style of shirt or pants, for example, you wanna include that in your prompt as well. You could even define hair, straight hair, curly hair, shortcut, things like that. By doing this, you're giving the AI more information, therefore resulting in more consistent results. Here's a few more examples where I took the same concepts. I inputted these fictitious names and came up with this K-pop looking character. As I show you some of the examples here, you see that the face is consistent, but there's quite a bit of variation with the jackets. Here's some full body shots of the same character, but notice the clothes are very different but at least the face remains the same. Obviously, these have all been keeping the face consistent. Now let's look at some workarounds on keeping the clothing fairly consistent. There are two main things you could do with your prompt. You can enter character turnaround or character sheet. Entering multiple poses also helps you get a variety of poses and even stating front, back, or side views can also encourage different perspectives. Let's take a closer look at this one. As you see, the belts are fairly consistent. All the characters here have jeans on. Now the rips aren't as consistent, but these two are. The jackets are fairly consistent, the faces, even the watches, except this guy's got a bracelet but even the shoes are fairly consistent. And the good thing about character turnarounds is that if you set it up to have a plain background in your prompt, you can remove the background either in Leonardo AI, there is a remove background function, which is this icon here. See, I have only two tokens left. Or you could take it into another editor like Photoshop, Canva, and remove the background yourself. The other tip I wanna give you is to experiment with the upscale options. 
There are four different ones now. For this type of anime style, I'm using Creative Upscaled Image, and it tends to smoothen things out. And especially for full body images, you tend to lose some detail. Like if I open up the original image here, you see that there's not much definition in the face. But after the upscaling, we're able to recover some of those details to make it quite acceptable if you're just doing like one or two page comics or short stories. I chose to use Dream Shaper for this round of experimentation because of the style of the model and the results I can get. The downside of using a model like Dream Shaper is that the characters tend to look the same. For example, I have this character turnaround image that I did, and you see it's fairly consistent between these two images. And then this one, I changed the nationality, but the faces still look the same. It's just the hair color is different. Now, obviously you can tweak the prompt a lot more so that you have a bit more variation in the face, like in this example. One of the obvious benefits of using character turnaround in your prompt is that you can get multiple positions in a fairly consistent manner. If you look at the faces here, very consistent the blue shirts across, even the belts and the jeans as well, except for the shoes at the bottom here. But hey, three out of four, that's not bad. The size of your image can also play a factor to get different perspectives. And sometimes you'll get a variety of results where you have a main image here, some half body shots here, some different perspectives. The downside of this is that you're gonna be re-rolling a lot of times to get similar results. Here's more upscaled examples of using a particular prompt. These two images in terms of the shirt are more accurate than this one. If you have some post-production skills, like if you know how to clone and stamp or do some basic masking, you could easily fix these to match this shirt. Similar experience with this example where the tops are at least consistent and then we have jeans here. Now, sometimes the inconsistency can work in your favor. Let's say you're developing a story. I took the same prompt and this time, instead of a white background, I put a city in the background. You can split this shot in two and use them in different parts of the story. Same thing with this one. At least the hair is kind of consistent, different top, but we can split this in two and utilize them somewhere else. As previously mentioned, the biggest thing with this is that you're limited to particular poses. It's very difficult to get action poses, but you can use this for different standing poses, different expressions. So far, I've found that if you can reroll it enough times and you have lots of tokens, you can string together a bunch of these generations and get fairly consistent results. I hope you're still with me because now we're going to solve the posing problem with ControlNet. Now, if you don't know what ControlNet is, make sure to check out previous videos that I've done on it. But basically what you can do is take pictures either of yourself, a friend, somebody you know, and use those pictures to develop specific poses. These two images are based on real photos that I've taken of April. And basically I use the same prompts that we were previously looking at. The downside of using control net is that you lose that consistency. Although you can do more complex posing, it's much harder to keep consistency with the clothing. The one thing I didn't mention earlier, whether you use the character turnaround or you use individual images, the other thing you can do is utilize the seeds. So in these examples, I took a seed of a character turnaround and developed individual images here to have the same likeness of the character. I used a similar prompt so that we have, you know, the purple shirt and jeans. At least the character itself is consistent. And again, I can use these shots in different parts of my story that I'm developing. So I know this was more of a show and tell video, but really the concept is fairly easy. It's just putting in the effort to experiment and re-roll your images and basically 
your end goal is to collect a whole bunch of these and then go into Leonardo AI's training and train a model based on that character. Although that won't solve the consistency of clothes, at least you can get a consistent character and not have to prompt for the face, for example. You'll have a trained model that looks the way you want it. That part I'm still going to do. As you can see, there was a lot we covered today. If you're new here and you're wondering about Leonardo AI, make sure to check out these videos. Until the next one, I'll see you when I see you.